Uh, hi, my name is Jetan Ginty, and I'm an associate software engineer with the developer engagement team at Genesis. And today I'm just going to be doing a quick video showing how to install and use Terraform on a Windows machine. And I'm also just going to run a blueprint at the end just to show how we use Terraform. So the first thing we need to do is just to install Terraform on your machine. So what we're going to do is I have, if we just go to Google and you just go to the Terraform website in the downloads, and we'll go to Windows for the downloads because it's a Windows machine. We're just going to download one of these. And the only difference here is the 64 is for 64 bit, and this other one here is for 32 bit, whichever your operating system is. My operating system is 64 bit, so I'm going to get the 64 bit one. So that's downloaded the zip file. And if I just go to my downloads here, I can close Google. I just go to my downloads here, the zip file is there. And inside there, we have the Terraform application. But before I extract it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my program files. And in here, I'm just going to create a new folder. And that folder is just going to be called Terraform. The name can be anything. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to create that. And then I'm going to go back to my downloads. And I'm going to extract this, fol this fol folder here. And I'm going to extract it into the folder I just made. So into my program files and into my Terraform. And I just select this folder. So I'm going to extract that here. So that's done now. And if we go to our command prompt, let's type cmd I'm in my command prompt. I can just, if I type terraform, you can see it's not installed yet. So what we need to do is we need to go to the folder where we where we extract the file to. So I'm here in the program files in terraform, we have the application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save, copy this file location, the full location of this folder. So just control C. And what we need to do is we need to change environment variable or edit one, sorry. And an environment variable is just a, vi a variable that belongs to the operating system. So to get to them, we just type in our search bar env and this, this will come up and we just go in here and we click on environment variables. And this path variable, this path environment variable, that's the one we need to change. So if I just click edit, there's a few already added to it. I'm just going to add new. And I'm just going to paste in the file folder location. So program files, Terraform. And that goes to the Terraform application that we saved. So if I just click OK, OK again, and I can close this. I can close this as well. I'm just going to go back to my command prompt. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type Terraform. So now Terraform has been installed. The computer knows where it is and it's installed and we can use it. And these four, five commands here, they're the main Terraform commands and they're the main ones we'd be using. So we can close the command prompt again. And what I'm going to do just to show how we use Terraform to run and create objects for us, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a blueprint that we made. So if I go here, I'm in home blueprints and then I'm in the developer center. And if you just go down here to blueprints and then find this blueprint, build a web chat chat based chatbot, that's the blueprint I'm going to be running. And to run this, you just need a few things installed already. You'll need Git installed because we need to clone the repo. You'll need AWS access because it's it's deployed using AWS. And you'll need Git or you'll need the Go programming language installed. You'll, I also recommend having a text editor because we need to create some files and edit some files as well. And it just makes things a lot easier. So the first thing we need to do is we need to clone the repo. And we just go down here to the clone GitHub repo and we just follow this link. And if I just go here, copy this URL, that's the link for the repo. And I go back to my command prompt, I can CMD. I'm just gonna clone this into my documents. So I'm gonna change that directory. So I'm in my documents and I'm just gonna go git clone and paste in the URL. And that's all you need to do to clone the repo. And so that has all our, the, that's the, all the files we need to run this blueprint. So I'm gonna get, go out of this for a second because you don't need it anymore. And if we go back to the blueprint, you can see that we need to set up some environment variables to run this blueprint. And you should have these environment variables and they basically just give you access, the access that you need. So we need to set these using it as an environment variable. And the easiest way to do that on Windows is to create a batch file 
and then run that batch file and it'll just set all the variables for you. So what I'm going to do just to show you, I'm going to create some example environment variables just to show how to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create them on my desktop. So here in VS Code, I'm going to open the desktop folder. I'm just going to select that folder and that opens it. And I'm just going to add a new file. And that's just, I'm just going to call it example. The name of the file doesn't matter. And then .bat. Now the .bat is important because it just says that it's a batch file. So we're going to run that. And I'm going to go SATX. And then example. Very good. And I'm going to give it a value. And it's going to one, two, three. So that's, and we can create a, as many environment variables as we want. It basically just runs the, each command one after another. So if I wanted to set another one, I could just go set X and just call it a variable two. And I'm going to give that the value of A, B, C. So this, the first environment variable is called example variable and it's just one, two, three. And then I'm going to set another one to call variable two and that has the value of A, B, C and it's a string. But I don't need this for, sorry. So that's that, That's all you need to do for your variables. But for your variables, you'll have Genesis OAuth ID or Genesis OAuth secret, Genesis region, the different ones you need. And you're just going to create them one after another, set X, the name, and then the value, just one after another. And then we can get rid of that. So that's saved now. So I can go out of this. And here's my variable, or here's my batch file. So if I just double click this, it'll run it. It'll run those two commands and set the variable. So if I go back to where we set the path variable, env, and I go back to my environment variables, we can see they're both set. There's variable two is here and example variable is here. So they've been set so that we can use them now. But what I've done is for my Genesis ID and secret and the different ones I need, I just created this batch file for myself. So when I run this, it's gonna set them for myself. So I just double click this. So you just set the five of them there the five variables I need for this project. So they're set now and I can run the blueprint. And what I need to do is I'm going to go, I'm going to go into VS Code actually, and I'm going to open the Terraform folder. So I get rid of this, get started, open a folder. And because I saved in documents, here it is. And it's not the first one we need. It's or it's inside this blueprint. And then it's there, we go to Terraform this Terraform folder. So if I select this folder, and the reason we're going to Terraform, the Terraform folder is because that's where the Terraform files are. And we always run the Terraform from where the Terraform files are. So that's here, they're all here, Terraform files. And the first thing I need to do is I need to delete this file here because we don't need it. And it'll be recreated for ourselves. And then I just need to change a few of these files. The first one I need to change is this dev auto TFRs here. And I need to change this prefix. So because these need to be unique, I just you, you basically just need to put your own name on it. So what I like to do is I like to go just my name and then a random number, like 285. Now that it doesn't matter, it can be anything you want. That's just what I like to do. So that's saved. I also need to go into our provider. And this is where we're getting the Genesis Terraform provider. But there's a bit of a problem with the newest version. So I like to use the previous version. But it's not a problem. It just doesn't work with this blueprint. So I like to use version 1.7.0. So just basically, we've changed our provider and it doesn't work with this blueprint for now because we have to change it. So if you just use 1.7, it'll work fine. And then another one we need to change is our archive.tf. And this command is a command that was supposed to run on Mac OS. So we just need to change it a tiny bit just to run out Windows. So just here, just type set. That's all you need to do because we're setting this variable here. And because it's different on Mac OS and Windows, I just need to put the set here for it to work. And then I go to my main and these Q names, classifier Q names, I need to change them because they also need to be unique. So I like to just, I just like to use the same one that I used in the TFRs. It doesn't have to be the same as long as they're unique. But I just like to keep them the same age, two, five. So they're all set now. So I can close these files. 
or I can just go to the terminal and that's all set up. And all I need to do is run the first Terraform command we run is Terraform init. So I just run that. And it could take a few minutes, kind of depends on your internet connection. But all this does is basically just initialize the Terraform project and it'll install your providers. See here, it's installing the AWS providers and the Genesis Cloud providers that we need. And if we didn't specify the version, it would of the Genesis Cloud, it would get the newest version, but I want the version 1.7.0 because it just works with this blueprint. So that's everything's been installed now. We've run Terraform Net and we can just run our project now. So before we build all the objects, what we like generally run is a Terraform plan. And we run that. And what plan does is it just gives us a list of all the objects that it's going to create. And it doesn't create them. It just gives you a list of the ones that it's going to create. So here, it's going to create 14 to add. And it just gives you the details about, it, about the objects it's going to make. And they don't really matter. So now that we have some works fine, we're going to run Terraform apply. And Terraform apply is the one that will actually create everything. So if I run Terraform apply, and it can usually take a while to run. So that we're just going to run and it's going to create. Oh, we also need to just give it permission to create everything. Type yes. So that will just go out and create all the Terraform, all the objects we need, the Genesis Cloud objects and the AWS objects that we need to run this blueprint. So that's going to go out and create them. And that is the, five, the second last Terraform command we're using. And it's going to just go out and create everything now. Now, I'm going to stop here once this runs. I'm not going to test our deployment or show what it created. But if you go down here onto the Blueprint page and you go down here, you can it'll show you what it created. We're basically just making a little chatbot where you send a message, it'll send a message back. That's all it's doing. And it's, it's using all the objects that we created here in VS Code and it's still running. So if you wanted to test it and see what it made, you can follow the blueprint and show it'll show you how to test it and see what you made. But I'm not going to do that because the purpose of this video is just to show how to use Terraform and not how to use the chatbot. So once this is running, it can take a second sometimes because there's just so many objects it has to make. There we go, so it's made. So now everything's made. If you want to go test it, you do it now. You would just follow the blueprint and follow this here, test your deployment, and you can go see what you made. But again, I'm not going to do that because it's not the purpose of this video. So once you're done with it and you don't need it anymore, we're just going to run a Terraform fly, tar Terraform destroy. And this is going to run very similar to apply where it asks your permission before it does anything. But if you don't want it to ask permission, we can throw in this auto approve. And what that does is it just skips where you give approval. It'll just automatically create, delete, or in this case, destroy everything. But if we throw the auto approve for the apply, it will just create everything without asking for the yes. So I'm just going to do that. If I didn't put in the auto approve, it would ask my permission. It's basically like the opposite of the apply, where instead of creating it, it will give you a list of everything it's going to delete and then just ask for your input. So see. So it's going to delete everything now. And uh, it's just good to do this because it has helps with, because a lot of the AWS stuff, it can only, have, the names have to be unique. It just helps with like clashes and things and it helps you save an unnecessary objects that you don't need. So that's just going to go through them all, all the objects that created that we created before and delete them all. And that's all we do with Terraform. It just goes out and creates objects or delete them when you need it. And that's all it does. You might get this error that it can't delete some things, but that's fine. It's it's not really important. As long as most of it's deleted, it's fine. And that's it. That's all we need to do to use Terraform and install it. And hope this video helps.